the workmanship and design of a Chinese landscape, the grace of a sculpted Greek warrior, or the inviting warmth of a sunny French landscape. All of these can be appreciated without any knowledge of Chinese philosophy, Greek mythology, or French geography. This is because art can be enjoyed for its sheer aesthetic pleasure. But all art, regardless of culture, is also laden with a symbolic vocabulary involving nature, myth, and religion, all of which convey certain attributes, ideas, and information. It is in the symbolism of art that we can read the attitudes of a people towards themselves and their universe. The full significance and the compute, complete beauty of art, however, cannot be appreciated unless we also understand this symbolism. Westerners attempt to understand or even to approach Chinese art falls very very short when it comes to interpreting this symbolism simply because Chinese symbols are different from those in the West often just the opposite of what a Westerner might expect take the dragon for example in the West it is representative of evil and the devil to the Chinese however it is a benevolent beast the king of all animals, the bringer of rain, a symbol of strength and goodness. The Chinese believe that dragons live in the sky, the river, and the sea, and that they also control the rain clouds. In Chinese mythology, the dragon was one of the four assistants who helped make the world. It has been used more than any other Chinese symbol, appearing on Chinese bronzes more than 3,000 years old, as well as on 20th century cloisonne vases. It became the emblem of good government, and eventually a symbol of the emperor himself, whose throne was the dragon's seat and whose anger was the reversal of the dragon's scales. As a royal symbol, the dragon is easily recognized because it has five claws on each foot. Less important dragons, you see, and there are nine different varieties ranging from quarrelsome to literary, they must be satisfied with only four claws on each foot. Let's take a look now at this popular Chinese symbol. The dragon has been depicted in every type of Chinese art form. The imperial five-clawed dragon shown on this Ming Dynasty embroidery makes his home in an undersea cave from which he dispenses rain, thunder, and lightning. This ancient winged dragon was cast in bronze between the fifth and third centuries BC during the Zhou Dynasty and probably ornamented a building or served as a handle on an elaborate vessel. Carved in jade, a boy and a dragon ride among the clouds. Between them is a lucky pearl. The dragon is often depicted with a pearl in its mouth, and some Chinese believe that when he spits out the pearl, fair weather will follow. The dragon motif was used extensively in ceramics, as on this vase and on this cup both dating from the Ming Dynasty more than 500 years ago. An unusual design is this thousand-year-old jade plaque representing two confronting uh, dragons. Perhaps the most dominant aspect of Chinese art is the Chinese philosophy of man's relationship to nature, which dates back to primitive times. Early Chinese explained creation and the workings of nature through a dualistic principle that they called Ang and Yin. Represented here in this egg-like symbol, they believed that creation and all of nature itself were the results of positive and negative forces. Ang is in the active light and male principle of the universe, and Yin the passive dark and female principle. One of these principles is always at work governing the seasons in bird, plant, and animal life. Unlike the dualism of the Western world, in which good and bad are always in conflict, Ang and Yin are interdependent, complementary, and balancing. For example, the sun at noon is starting to give way to night. Summer balances winter, as man and woman balance one another. Consequently, to the Chinese, 
Man is never the center of the universe as he is in the traditional Western view. He is but a small part of it. Man's life is neither superior nor inferior to that of the animals, birds, and plants. For each existence has its own value and is but a part of the total life of nature. Thus, for the Chinese, the observation and understanding of nature bring an understanding of mankind. The details, then, of a Chinese landscape are more than graphic representations, more than decorative embellishments to man's world. To the Chinese, the winds of the air become man's desires, the clouds his wandering thoughts, mountain peaks his lonely aspirations, and rushing waters his liberated energies. While styles of landscape painting have changed, this symbolism has remained in Chinese art down through the ages. While Western landscape painting pictures the land as man's home, the Chinese landscape is a search for the soul of nature. To the Chinese, viewing a landscape was a philosophical exercise. Man's harmony with nature is common to the three main strands of Chinese thought, Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism. As Confucius said, he who is in harmony with nature hits the mark without effort and understands the truth without thinking. Chinese landscape painting did not seek to depict a particular place at a particular time. Rather, it was an imaginative abstraction, using certain symbolic forms of mountains, rocks, trees, waterfalls, lakes, and bridges, with man being only one small part of the total scene. It was drawn without any blocking in of elements or prior sketching, for the artist painted the scene spontaneously as his mind revealed it to him. His landscape was not intended just to be viewed. It was intended to be read, its symbolism absorbed, to bring the viewer into closer harmony with nature and with himself. The profusion of plants and animals in Chinese art all have symbolic attributes. For example, women in their youth and beauty are compared to young blossoms. The stage at which a flower opens or appears, whether as a bud or blossom, indicates the advance of the season or the advance of man's life cycle. The plum blossom is especially favored by the Chinese because it clings to the branches even in snow and falls before it withers. Therefore, it has come to symbolize courage and hope and because of its purity, it may also be a symbol of female beauty. In this 19th century embroidery, the flying swallows are emblematic of freedom. The lotus blossoms, whose dazzling whiteness is not affected by the mud and the stagnant waters from which it grows, is symbolic of purity. Geese take only one mate, and therefore in Chinese art, they are a symbol of constancy and of happy married life. Chinese painters often represent geese by the side of some ice-bound lake, as in this detail. Such a painting would be a suitable gift to some old couple who has passed through many years together. Since the earliest times, the tiger has symbolized courage, energy, strength, and cunning. He also represents the West, the direction of the Western paradise, as well as fire, heat, and wind, and thus balances the power of the dragon. In the mountainous areas of China, where the tiger is common, the peasants worship it as a god because its strength wards off demons too powerful for domestic gods. Because of its unusual powers, the, dragon, the tiger's claws and whiskers were charms against fear. Its meat was used in medicine and was eaten to gain strength and cunning, and generals in ancient times drank its blood mixed with a powder ground from its teeth. The lion was not native to China, but was brought to the country as tribute. Like the tiger, it was used to devour or scare away evil spirits. Stone li lions were placed outside Buddhist temples as guardians, and from this role became known as Fu dogs, meaning dogs of Buddha. The lion also became known as a symbol of justice and an upholder of the dignity of law. The Chinese or Pekinese dog was bred in imitation of the Chinese stylized lion, which is evident in this sculpture. Male lions were depicted playing with a ball of brocade, while females were represented playing with a lion cub. 
In China, the horse is constantly referred to as an emblem of speed and perseverance, as well as rank, power, and wealth, because it was reserved for the chase and for warfare. Tradesmen never rode them, for they were limited only to warrior chiefs and noblemen. Similarly, the water buffalo serves as a symbol of many attributes. As a farm animal, it is representative of a peasant's life. In ancient times, it was a symbol of the earth's fertility and of the water god. For the Taoist, it represents a simple life spent in harmony with nature. The carp denotes accomplishments since it must swim the cataracts of the Yangtze River in order to reach its spawning grounds. Since fish are plentiful in China, they represent the reproductive powers of nature. A pair of fish interlocked in the form of a pottery jar or jade ornament symbolizing domestic harmony is a common gift to a bride. In Chinese mythology, Ban Ku, a dwarf born of Ang and In, made the world with the help of four supernatural assistants, the dragon, the vermilion bird, which is a kind of phoenix, the unicorn, and the tortoise. These four helpers were adopted as part of the symbolism of Taoism, which is based on the thought of Lao Tzu, <clears throat> a Chinese philosopher who lived about 600 B.C. According to his teaching, man should cease striving for worldly wealth and honors and should instead lead a passive and simple life. Man's mystical harmony with his own inner nature is the true path, the way or Tao, which leads to happiness, to an ideal society, and to immortality. Let's take a look now at some of these Taoist symbols in Chinese art. The vermilion bird is believed to appear on earth only in times of peace and plenty, when it perches on a boulder of jade. Second only to the dragon among supernatural creatures, it was used throughout imperial times as a royal symbol. This detail of a luxurious lacquer cabinet shows the vermilion bird on the left and the five-clawed imperial dragon on the right. Its image was also used as hair ornaments and decorated the robes of queens. The unicorn, gentlest of all creatures, treads carefully during its rare appearances on earth for fear of crushing living things. Its trips to earth are joyous occasions for the Chinese because soon afterward a ruler will be born. Since the tortoise was one of the first things created, it is the symbol of long life and wisdom. One legend has it that there are only female tortoises, and so it must mate with a serpent depicted together in this 5th century earthenware figure. Symbols of immortality appear often in Taoist art. While winter winds strip the leaves from trees, the pine tree remains always green, and therefore has become a symbol of long life and endurance. The crane occupies an honored position in Chinese legend and symbolism, and also is associated with longevity. Along with the tortoise and the spotted deer, the crane is found in constant attendance on Shaolao, the mythical god of longevity. Here, the crane is in the bottom right portion of the statue, entwined in the god's gown. Paintings of scholars became a popular theme when Confucianism dominated Chinese thought after the second century. A code of ethics rather than a religion, Confucianism taught that wisdom, humanity, and virtue would reign in the family and in the country if the ancient rules and rituals of conduct were followed. Confucianism's primary influence is the respect it fosters for learning and culture, for the past and for an ordered society. Hence, among the Confucian symbols are books, the writing brush, and the lute, representing music, as seen as in this painting. Pictures showing devotion to parents and family also were popular. The importation of the first Buddhist images from India to China in the first century brought with it a new set of motifs and symbols. The Buddha may sit or stand on any of several thrones, but notably on an open lotus blossom, the symbol of purity. As Buddha said after receiving the enlightenment of the true way, just as the lotus, born in the water, bred in the water, overcomes water, even so I, born in the world, bred in the world, have overcome the world. The positions of the hands in representations of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, or enlightened beings, are of special symbolic significance. The hand is raised to the shoulder to indicate protection, 
as illustrated here with the right hand. The left hand indicates granting a wish. The hand is in the raised position, but with the first finger touching the thumb to indicate argument. In the hand position used in salutation or adoration, the hands are turned palm to palm in a prayerful attitude. Thumbs and fingers joined represent meditation. While in this position, the hands symbolize teaching. Another symbol in many Buddhist works of art is a third eye of enlightenment that appears on the center of the brow. Since prehistoric times, jade has been the most precious material in China, more valued even than gold. A Chinese philosopher once said that it possessed five virtues. Charity is typified by its luster, bright yet warm, uprightness to moral standards by its translucency, revealing the color and markings within, wisdom by the purity and penetrating quality of its note when the stone is struck, courage in that it can be broken but cannot be bent, fairness in that it has sharp edges which yet injure none. So closely identified is jade with virtue that the Chinese word for it, yu, also is a title of honor, meaning pure, precious, noble, and royal. Jade is highly valued in Chinese tradition, not only for its beauty, but also for its rarity, since none of the world's few sources of jade lie within the boundaries of China. Few stones are harder than jade. Most steel points will not scratch it. Carving jade, therefore, is extremely difficult. It is cut and polished by sawing, drilling, or rubbing it with an abrasive made of a harder stone. Beautiful, rare, and hard. Jade became a prized jewel for personal adornment, a symbol of wealth and authority, with an important place in legend and in ritual. One of the objects used in religious ceremonies was a perforated disc like this one. For thousands of years, these discs have been used in heaven worship. They are the symbol of heaven, an image as universal and as meaningful to the Chinese as the cross is to Christians and the Star of David is to Jews. Jade, the fairest of stones, thus provides a link between the gods and man. In this portrait, a nobleman carries a jade scepter and is wearing jade pendants and headdress ornaments. These scepters and other jade badges measured a man's rank and lands that he owned and served as a type of calling card on official visits, and also as battle insignia. If a nobleman were killed in battle and his jade badge taken, the lands and title it represent also went with it. This jade plaque of a prowling tiger was probably worn as an amulet to ward off evil spirits. This winged monster was carved during the third century, perhaps to illustrate an episode from mythology. On his back, he carries a monkey-faced demon who holds on tightly to his mount's mane. The Chinese god, known as the Jade Emperor, was said to live on top of a mountain of jade, whose lofty landscape may have resembled this carving. Cut during the Ming Dynasty from a single boulder, the mountain of jade is more than a foot high. This detail of this exquisite jade carving shows two figures strolling beneath a cliff, ducks swimming on a quiet lake, and a child playing on the shore. By its symbolism and its elegance, the bamboo has lent itself most happily to Chinese painting and is represented more often than any other plant or tree. One of the most rapidly growing plants in existence, the bamboo spreads by clumps, just as the Chinese clan expands, and therefore it has become emblematic of family devotion. Since it is green all year, it also is a symbol of endurance and constancy. The Chinese saying, the hollow bamboo has drooping leaves, is a description of a Chinese gentleman. It suggests that he is as unprejudiced as the hollow stem and as modest as the drooping leaves. The bamboo represents the essence of refinement and culture. It is gentle and graceful in fair weather, strong and resilient under adverse conditions. Its suppleness, adaptability, uprightness, firmness, vigor, freshness, and even the melancholy rustle of its leaves have all been translated into qualities of the mind 
the spirit and character. Far better than any other symbol, the bamboo characterizes the traditional, classic spirit of China, the balance, the harmony, and the oneness of man in his relationship to nature.